This is part two of our uh, vector series where we're dealing with the uh, Green's theorem. In the first part, or in the previous video, we proved this part of the formula that the double integral of q with respect to x dx dy equals this line integral q dy. That we proved in the uh, last video. Now in this video, we want to prove the rest of the formula dealing with this and this. Then we can just add the two parts together and we'll have the entire equation. So let's see how this would be set up. We have the double integral and we have partial of p with respect to y. Now here we have it dx dy, but again this is just a generic setup here, a generic formula. We don't have any specific limits here, so we can have dy dx where y goes from C to D. Let's make this a little bit neater. Y goes from C to D. X goes from A to B. And remember what we're doing, just like we did in the last video, we're considering the lot that a general formula for a line integral going about this figure like this. And that's what this is. And now we're dealing with this part. And we have this integral with a minus sign before it. And now we do exactly what we did in the last video. This is an iterated integral, so we consider the first one. And Remember, P and Q in general are functions of X and Y's, so we should put that in here. Partial of P, P of function of X and Y. But now this is just simply going to be P again, because we have the integral dy dy. That just simply be the integral of dP. And that's just simply p. Now the integral of du, that's just u. And again, we discussed this in the uh, last video. So this first integral is just almost trivial. When we integrate it, we get p. p of x, y. and y goes from c to d. So that's this integral. Then we have this integral left over that we haven't done yet from a to b. We'll have this dx and there's a minus sign out here. So here, we can substitute y is d minus y is c, so that will equal the integral a to b. There's a minus sign out here, and we will have p x d minus p x c. dx. Or if we modify through by the minus sign, this will be xc, and that will be xd. And get rid of this. And this would be xd. So, this double integral 
comes out to be equal to this single integral once we do just this first manipulation here of our iterated integral. So we're going to write this up here now without the minus sign. We already took that into account. So minus this double integral equals after a single integration it equals this. P x c minus p x d. dx. And we're not going to take it any further than that. What we are going to do is switch gears and consider what would be that line integral. So we have it like this. Integral P dx will equal now we're doing it and again P is a function in general of x and y let's put that in here okay so now we're going around the entire figure so here we're going from x equal a to x equal b up on this horizontal line where y is just has a constant value of c. So that will equal p dx. x goes from a to b and xy, but for that horizontal line, y is a constant value of c. So we'll have x, c, dx. Then we go up, straight up, dx is 0. Then we go from here to here, from x equal b to x equal a, along this horizontal line, where y just has a steady value of d. So we'll have plus this integral p dx and x goes from b to a. x goes from b to a and y has a steady value of d. So it's p x of y or for here it's p x D. And we have then the line integral equals this expression. We can combine these together, make this a negative sign and switch the order of these. We have minus AB. And then this will equal the single integral from A to B and we will have P X C minus P X D DX and this is exactly what we found up here from this expression. So we have we had a minus out here. We can put it in here if we want to. So what we have is that this, moving the minus sign in here, is the same as this. So we have minus partial of p with respect to y 
dy dx. And here we had y goes from c to d, x from a to b, equals this line integral p dx. And that's what this is. And in the last video, we derived this formula, so add them together, and we have this. And again, this is just a generic form. There's no limits here, so it could be dx dy or dy dx. We can just write it in a very general format for the time being. But that's Green's theorem. So hopefully we derived it in a way, or I don't know if we really derived it, but demonstrated in a way that makes sense to you. We did it with a very simple figure, obviously, just a, a rectangle. But again, the way we set it up and the way we worked it, it would be the same for any type of uh, closed figure. And other than that, really to um, um, get used to it, it's just to work some problems using this expression. And so what we'll do in the other videos coming up is we will have several worked problems where we will have to use the Green's theorem. So that's what we'll be doing in the uh, other videos. And again, uh, this is for the uh, playlist vector analysis. And the playlist is at the website. The first page right now is under construction, but the playlist is there um, at digital-university.org.